We all face moments in our lives that have us reevaluating what we want our future to look like. For Saili Levy, it was a health scare that jumpstarted his pursuit to change his career path. After several failed attempts, it was a venture into vanilla that is bringing his family some sweet success. Smell this. Does it smell good? Yeah. Smell that. What does it smell like? Vanilla. Okay, go put it away. Put it on the table. <laughs> if I close my eyes and I think about it, you know, I'm still in that doctor's office where we didn't know what was going on. You know, he had some abnormal blood work and we went to a specialist. The ending of 2016, um, I was diagnosed with leukemia. And at this point, there had been some things going on in my life. Uh, my sister had just passed away. And now finding out that I had leukemia, it kind of kind of made me uh, reevaluate my life. I was at the time uh, pregnant with my third child. I'll never forget driving home from that appointment. And I was crying and Sadie's telling me, stop crying. Um, and, you know, and he was emotional. And it started this discussion um, that he's talked about several times. If I were to die, how would my girls remember me? I was spending, you know, a lot of time at work and I wanted to be around my girls more often. And I didn't want them to remember me as coming home from work, being too tired to take them out to the parks. And so it, it kind of motivated me to think of something else that I could do. And that's when I started looking into um, taking some night classes at BYU and trying to start my own business. He came home with several ideas of what he thought would be able to take him and take our family to where he wanted to be, where he imagined um, he could go. And so a lot of those ideas, I thought, oh, you're crazy. No, we're not doing that. I love you, I support you, but um, try again. Well, first he uh, wanted to do mushrooms and um, then he decided uh, party tents, you know, those huge white tents. And what else did we try? Bouncy houses? So it wasn't until a friend of mine's, while we were working together for the water company here in Laie, um, he recognized, you know, the vanilla plants growing in this one area we were working on. And at first, I didn't think anything of it, but it wasn't until a couple of weeks later I went back to him and I asked him to explain to me what uh, that that vine was. We did some research online, and uh, as soon as we saw some videos on YouTube and Google, we were like, "Let's go and." see if we can take some of these vines home and start planting them in our backyards. And so, you know, Lay Vanilla Company basically started from there. At first we killed many vanilla vines just from not knowing what to do. But between the research that we did online and with the hands-on trial and error process that we went through, we were able to learn more and how to grow vanilla. I think altogether it was about three years. Because vanilla, it takes about two to three years for the plants to mature. And so for the first two to three years, I was working full time for the water company and at the same time planting vanilla in my backyard. So he would put in his hours at the water company and then he would put in his hours in the backyard doing the vanilla. And it would be till really late at night. And I saw this for a while. And I thought to myself, he's really going for it. And it's really going somewhere. We were able to reach out to a few of the local restaurants here on the island. And as they got interested in vanilla, um, it kind of gave us hope to, okay, let's, let's continue to do this. It was around January of 2020 when we decided to take the leap of faith. And then everyone knows around March of 2020, that's when COVID hit. But um, we knew it was something that we needed to do because we had prayed about it and we had talked about it because 
as the kids were staying home more because there were no schools, I was able to kind of uh, be there more for the kids and help them with school and and I was able to take them to the farm and help build the farm that it is today. My wife picked up a lot of that financial burden that we had to take care of. I decided as a nurse it's easy for me to pick up extra shifts, to pick up an extra job. And it took a while before um, it became profitable, you know, and it, and it took a while um, before we realized that it would be something that would be able to take our family into the future, but it didn't take a while for us to see that we made the right decision and that this is where we wanted to go because I could see how happy he was, how happy the kids were, and our family unit was so much happier um, with him being with the kids more and me being able to help out, it just really brought us all together. I can't hear you, Champion. Are you ready? Yeah! Okay, Mush. 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 You guys gotta build the farm. Let's go. Push. Are we gonna have a break? Yeah, okay, take a break. Break time. Good job. Okay, everybody in. Everybody in. <laughs> One, two, three, go oh, family team. Okay, go take a break. <laughs> so the girls were there from the beginning, um, from rolling out the ground cloth, the ground mats, to helping me um, pound in the different poles that holds up the, the netting, um, to bringing the plants over from our backyard to the farm where it is now. So a typical day on the farm depends on what um, what cycle we're in. And so the different cycles that we go through is from January to March, um, the, the plants are dormant and they're growing. From March to August, um, it's a little bit more work that we have to put in because all the flowers, this is the flowering period. So we have to hand pollinate the flowers because we don't have any of the natural pollinators here in Hawaii. Uh, the natural pollinators, they're indigenous to Central America. And those natural pollinators, it's called the melipona bee. Yep. Yeah, so the pollen is under the anther cap, yep. then you want to squeeze it lightly so the pollen can get to the anther cap, and then that causes the stem swell to become the beautiful vanilla. Perfect. Did you catch that? Yeah. And now we'll get you to pollinate. So my girls are all in with the business. Um, from hand pollinating, um, you know, Malia, I've taught her when she was six. Mi'ini um, Lani, she's learned how to pollinate now, she's also six. And Taimane, she's five years old and she's one of those ambitious young ones who wants to learn now while she's five. And then from August to December, um, this is when we harvest. You can see that they're mature when they start to turn yellow at the tips. And uh, we typically let them wait um, on the vine for at least nine months. Sometimes we have to wait longer. Here's what they call a bouquet. Cause it's got a whole bunch of them on top. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut these beans out. We gotta separate them, right? Cause we gotta get them ready for blanching. We want to blanch them so that they don't continue to grow and split. You see how these ones are already split? Yeah. Even though they smell really good, they don't have the looks that people want. What we need to do in order to cure them is we blanch them in hot water. And so the temperature that the water needs to be at is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And as soon as it's at 150 degrees, we will put all the vanilla beans in the water and we'll sit them there for about five minutes. We'll dump them out and we'll wrap them up in towels or blankets. And then we store them in an insulated box for about two days. Then we go through the drying process, which is just sitting them out in the sun for an hour and then wrapping them back up and sweating them in the insulated box for another 23 hours. And we just do that over and over again. Uh, for about a month. My least favorite thing to do at the farm is pulling weeds. Um, and that's where my wife comes in. Um, she's the, the number one weed pooler that we have on the books. 
I mean, we don't pay her, but she's in the books. <laughs> I don't have a salary, but I do get foot massages. <laughs> it's been so rewarding and so fun to see the girls grow into La E Vanilla Company. And we have number four on the way. Um, it's going to be our first son. I'm going to raise him to learn how to crawl in the farm so he can crawl and pull weeds. You know, they grab everything, so it shouldn't be a hard transition. <laughs> Mama's done. I was born and raised in Laie. Sa'ili was born in Samoa and raised there until he was about seven or eight when his family moved to Laie. And so when we talk about why did we name it Laie Vanilla Company, you know, we could have chosen anything. I feel a deep connection to Laie. Laie Elementary School, Sa'ili and I were in the same second grade class there at the elementary school, and now our kids go to that school. I told Sa'ili that this is what I want it to be. This is where it all started. This is where he found that first vanilla vine that launched our business. It was in the backyard of our family home that I was born and raised in, um, that my grandfather built that we killed and brought back to life and learned how to grow all these vanilla vines. And so that is part of the legacy now that our family has of Laie and that we hope will live on in Laie Vanilla Company. As far as my diagnosis with leukemia, um, we are still monitoring it and it looks like I could live a normal life as long as we uh, do what we need to do and follow what the doctors say. I tell my kids, if you believe it, you can achieve it. And if you're passionate about something and you don't know how it's going to get done, I tell them, how is none of your business. You just do what you need to do now, take it one step at a time, and it'll all work out.